Ooh, what's up guys and welcome to another video from me the Scarander. As of today we are doing a bit more serious uh, analysis of course our week 3 match against well the Swiss Girls, a very 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 powerful opponent but before going into that I'm gonna show you guys of course my team in general which are of course um, Thunderous, Landorus, Volcarona, Pangoro, Drapion, Shaming, Gengar, Mega DMC, Alakazam, Heracross, Kyurem, and Kubalion. And um, yeah, we have benched Pangoro, uh, Volcarona are benched, and of course Kyurem, the regular form, are benched for this match. They are not going to be monsters that's going to be a part of this analysis. And of course, um, I'm trying a bit different with this analysis since I just watched the Gabriel's video, uh, my previous opponent really, make sure to check him out of course. Um, he just made such an amazing job and with that in mind I thought like, yeah, this video needs to be going a bit more serious. So yeah, we're gonna talk about of course our opponent team, at least what it brought, uh, or we're gonna bring, or what it has. <laughs> that things are finished of course. Uh, his complete team are Bishop, Stami, Gudra, Nidoqueen, Scrafty, Miss Mages, Talent Flame, Diggaspeed, Gorgeist, and Mega Odino. His bench mods are Raikou, Superior, and Escavalier. I'm really glad Superior is a bench mod because that Pokemon would not have been an easy task to take on. Um, but I can see why he kept his Pokemon bench as it is. Both Gudra, Nidoqueen, and Stami are important mods. Even Diggaspeed to some extent. So those are the ones we would have switched out for to get that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Diggerspeed is definitely a strong one against me. So, um, and of course, his latest game was an incredible one. But these are the ones I decided to bring. And of course, with EV Spread and all, it's gonna be showcased on the screen. The first and easiest mon to, of course, bring was Alakazam this time around, being the third time in the three weeks that he's been a part of the team. Now, Alakazam has a few things going for it. Uh, we're gonna go over optimal in a power fighting, which means that we have a different. EV spreads on it, but we have enough speed 224 to actually keep that one afloat. Uh, it's going to be enough speed to outspeed the Starmie, which of course is important. The Psyshock is slightly better due to it. If he has Gudra, then Psyshock will do significant amount more, even more than the potential Dazzling Gleam, which also is a move we're going to have. Mostly because of Scrafty. Definitely like the only reason we have that is for Scrafty. Hidden Power Fighting is only for Bishop, and it is because. Hidden Power Fighting actually takes out the Bishop, I don't need Focus Blast. And Focus Blast, you know, it's always kind of unreliable, so I felt that that was the safest way to go at it. And uh, really, nothing more to it, Alakazam, just a clean sweeper, Focus Sash to keep him afloat. That's why it's part of this team this time. Next one, Mega Dianchi, and for very good reasons too. Mega Dianchi hits this team hard. Now, we did work around with a lot of different sets. We were going for a rock polish set uh, without protect. We really tried to avoid use protect. We realized that the more we tried to do that, the more reliable or more reliant that was upon my opponent bringing slower team, which is nothing I really can do. And um, Dianchi turned out to be a setup fodder or even an easy kill if I'm not Mega Evolved. And with that in mind, we had to think about something different. We had to work around it much, much better. And uh, I think we found some footing here that's worth keeping in mind. Uh, so we have enough speed. Actually, first of all, we had enough speed to outspeed um, <laughs> Scrafty first, uh, trying to make a ball on that. But, you know, in the end, it won't really have mattered. It's better to use Protect and actually get the, um, the moves I need instead. So Mega Dianchi should be faster than Digger Speed. That's the only Pokemon I need to worry about. Um, Miss Majors is gonna be faster, but Miss Majors is not really a problem in the first place. Uh, enough bulk to live an adamant talent flame with Brave Birds, um, so that's really why we have a lot of HP in it. And um, the only mom being resistant of uh, the Moonblast is uh, his Needle Queen, of course, which is gonna hurt with uh, the um, Earth Power, which is a 2-hit kill from you know, pretty much no matter what range. And if we can force it down a little bit, it's gonna be even better. We're doing around 60% depending on the set, so that's something worth keeping in mind. Now, also worth keeping in mind is, of course, that his Nintendo King could or Queen could be scarfed. And, of course, Talonflame is just getting dead by the Diamond <laughs> diamond Storm. And, um, yeah, like I said, we did want to consider for Rock Polish, but it, as the time went on, it kind of recognized that we need the whole goddamn move pool to hurt his whole team. So, um, while I do like Moonblast Earth Power, it makes me quite vulnerable. So Diamond Storm need to go, uh, or need to be in, in this. 
and I couldn't risk going out uh, without their power. It just hurts so many things too. And I don't want to be face off things I need to win with completely wall this energy. I just, I don't. And the next one up is Lando. Yes, so he's making it for the third week in a row for obvious reason. It is probably my most defined wall. It's very, very flexible and it can deal with so far a lot of mounts. So this time we have enough speed investment to, of course, outspeed uh, Digger Speed. If it is non scarf, of course, that is. Um, basically, we're, we're running a lot of bulk this time around too with Rock Element. Uh, assuming that uh, his, um, what do you call it, us, um, Bandit set, we should be able to actually force it to kill itself. And that goes for a potential Sword Dance set too. Rock Element is um, definitely going to do a lot of damage on it. Plus, um, the recall together with the Rock Element will kill it eventually. And we have Smackdown over Stone Edge basically to, um, well, let's face it, we're gonna kill Talon Flame anyway. So if he stays in trying to kill me, then it's gonna go down to that Smackdown. If I'm not burned, that is, that has actually has a chance of surviving. And also the other Pokemon that could come in against the um, Landers Armies Majors. And getting Smackdown that could be important, depending on, of course, what state his Miss Majors are in. So that's the reason we have that. It's, it's kind of simple, but. Um, I know it will work, uh, it is basically here to set up rocks and actually fo force off the opponent. We do recognize that Digger's Speed is gonna have potentially Ice Punch here, so that's always gonna be a thing, but at least we can work around it with a bit of luck. And overall, yeah, Lando just makes this team quite flexible, so that's what we're gonna have in mind, and that's why it's a part of this team this time. Next one up is Empoleon. And for good reasons too, Empoleon is... Um, yeah, it's really flexible, it's really worth using. I'm trying to find different sets with Empoleon. We tried a physical set with Okaberry to win the matchup against the Talonflame, but it came down to a very, very sad <laughs> kind of explanation here. And that is that while that could work, it's only going to work against Talonflame. And do we really want that? And the question is no. Uh, if you don't bring Talonflame, then that set is going to be wasted. So we opt for uh, this set instead with the Pitaya Berry. So a specially oriented one, um, and of course Bataya Berry raise this special attack, which means that I actually can Oko or Tuitko his whole team, even Stormy, who resists those hits, are actually in that suitable area. And of course we have enough speed uh, to outspeed a Scarf Digger speed, if it is Scarf, that is, after one agility. Uh, aside of that, Stormy, like I said, there is the only thing resisted it. Um, and yeah, basically we're gonna try to use three subs, get the Torrent going, get the Pattaya going, and that should be just about enough. And Surf instead of Skull, because I want to hit harder. Uh, Hydro Pump is, I do believe, a bit more unreliable. I'm not sure, actually, that Empoleon gets that either. But uh, basically, we're going to try to use this the best of our abilities. Now, the thing is here, if I can go for an Agility, that would be awesome. But without going for a sub, that could actually force uh, Bishop in. And, of course, um... Bishop is, um, let's face it, if I pull agility off, it's going to be forced to go for a sucker punch, which means I can offer a sub. Um, that's pretty much what I'm going to go for. I hope I can um, hide the substitute until that point, but we have no idea if this is going to start off with or end with. But uh, Empoli can be a major player, but I need to play careful with it, because while that set is really good and going to hurt him a lot, I need to play that set right, or I'm gonna lose Empoleon really early, and losing Empoleon could definitely be a risk of actually losing this battle completely, because Empoleon will get a massively interesting role this time around, and it's gonna be worth using for that reason. And of course, with one agility, and this is probably the funniest part, with one agility behind us, my opponent cannot go for Flare Blitz to kill the Empoleon, he needs to go for Braver. Braver does, at best, 22% if it is banded. Surf will take that out. So, Empoleon, like I said, major play this match. I need to play carefully to not lose him early. And that's why he's a part of the team. It just works so And at the fifth spot, we got Kubelion. Yes, he's definitely making that back. Um, Kubelion is one of those rare monsters I have on my team that is very flexible because it can be either special oriented, it can be physically oriented, it can set up with Calm Mind or Sword Stance that acts to magnet rights. And he has enough bulk to stay in the team for quite some time before really going down. So, 
It's not a sweeper, it's more of a standfast guy who can actually work around a lot of mounts. Um, so this is the set we're going for. We're going to have a very, very aggressive set with Flash Cannon, Close Combat, Volt Switch, Stone Edge. Stone Edge basically is actually take out um, the pesky Talonflame if that matchup came, comes to be. It's not by any chance uh, optimal, but we can kind of see the switching coming in, and of course Stone Edge will take it out. And um, enough speed, of course, to uh, outspeed a scarf, non scarf ticker speed. Shukaberry is there basically to make sure that we can live the Ninja Queen. Um, and like I said, there, if Talonflame is ST set, then um, hopefully we can avoid being set up far against it too. Uh, Volspur is going to be there to um, do a lot of damage to the mods that will be staying in. And uh, of course. Volt Switch actually does around 50% depending on the set of his Starmie, which is going to be interesting. He just overall so Volt Switch makes sure that I can come in and out. However, at least Nido Queen is the only one really taking that on. And even with, with saying that, it's not going to take it on that well. Um, with Sugar Bear, like I said, their Flash Cannon could do a significant amount of damage. Now, I will obviously not stay in against that matchup if I'm not forced to. And Close Combat actually does more than Focus Blast on a potential Gudra, and it actually is close to taking out the Digger's Bee. I have a 6% chance, I do believe, of taking it out. After Rock, it's definitely going down. So, um, it's a mod that's worth using, it's worth keeping that in mind. Um, I should say that Digger's Bee's, um, if it is Scarf, then Shukaberry is gonna save me, but I'm gonna die as a result afterwards, because there is just... I won't have enough HP left after that matchup. But it's a risk I'm willing to take, it really is. I don't really want to fend off Digger's Bee in case it's agility set. Uh, because if it is agility set, then obviously he needs to go for agility to hurt me in the first place, which means we can actually take that out. So Cabellion is a very, very interesting mod this time around, and I'm sure he'll get some footing out of this. And I'm really looking forward to trying him out this time around. And the last pick is, well, not like you guys are surprised, of course, Drape Beyond Balthazar is gonna come back. Um, Drapion, like I said previously in my draft analysis, is one of those mods that I know I'm gonna use a whole lot. Not because it is a key sweeper, it's not because of the defensive wall, it's not because it can set up, no. It's flexible. It has a niche typing and it's flexible, which means that it fits every team I pretty much make. I, I like it as of right now, it just, it just works and I um, have yet to actually find a matchup where he is. Uh, Wasted, though obviously last less to many ga yeah. games. Wow, last few games, of course, has not been that favorable for it. It has done its purpose, though, knocking off items back and forth. Um, I should be honest and say that that's not how I opt to use my Drapion, but it has always gotten that role, and um, it's not something we can avoid. But this time, it's actually gonna get that rule I, a role I think he is deserving of, and that is a scarf set. Yeah, um, well, I, well, I like um, my uh, Alakazam as a safety net. I do recognize that Precon is also a very, very nice safety net set. We were optimized for going for a subset to begin with, um, pretty much Black Sludge or anything like that, to try to um, optimize our switch-ins, uh, but the thing that kind of ruins that is that if it's Digger Speed Scarf, then it's going to be wasted. If Talonflame can actually do a lot of damage to it anyway, so, um, we did like this instead. We have enough speed investment this time to outspeed uh, a Jolly Scarf's Digger Speed with the Choice Scarf in mind, of course. Uh, the Scarf allows us to, of course, <laughs> pursue Crap Stormy. Um, but basically, what we're gonna try to avoid, uh, first time going up against Stormy, we're gonna show that our Scarf knockoff should definitely be a part of killing it. Um, and we need to get rid of Stormy. Like, outside of Stormy, there's really nothing stopping our team that well. Um, and basically, Stormy is the only thing he has for hazard control, which means that if we lose the Stormy, uh, we can get up our rocks for real, which also means that we can take out, of course, the Talon Flame without really a big issue. The Aqua Tail is there to hit um, the likes of Nido Queen and um, Bishop, I do believe, also actually. And um, one more, one more, one more. We also hit, of course, Talon Flame. Hey. And of course, Poison Jab is there just to fill her stab. Um, we might optimize to go for an earthquake. That set is not really set in stone, but um, that is the one we're going to try to work around with. Um, 
Earthquake will help me, but being Scarfed is troublesome because that would actually mean that Talonflame can come in on it, which is something we don't want to do, we don't want to be set up father after all. So, that's why Poison Jab is there for the time being. I think that's said we're going to stand off with, but like I said, it's that part is undecided. But basically, Drapion is going to get some kill this time around. It will definitely catch my opponent off guard, and so should not really see this hits coming, or even if they do, uh, even if he sees this one coming, it obviously is going to be Sack Fodder, which means that Drapion is going to be even more dangerous depending on how he decides to play this game. And of course, like I said, Drapion, super flexible, it is going to be awesome to work this time around, and I'm really looking forward to using it again. So yeah, that is all the mods, this is definitely the sets we're going for, that's pretty much it. Like, I have a few notes that I'm going to keep aware of that, you know, that will help me throughout this game, there are a few things I need to be in mind of. Uh, Bishop, Digging Speed, Needle Queen can all be Scarfed, that's definitely going to be a thing. Um, and of course, if Digging Speed isn't Scarfed, then obviously it's the Agility set, so that's going to be frustrating and tough to deal with. Uh, but like I said, due to our Drapion, we actually are flexible enough to outspeed those if they are Scarfed, that is. Um, the Talent Flame is going to bring, we're pretty, much, pretty sure it's going to be a Sword Dance set. If it's a Bandit set, then that's going to be... Um, something that we need to keep in mind of, and of course, if it is the bandit, it seems like it should be... Well, he should really have Steel Wing. So, Ming of the Energy is not going to be a favorable matchup there, of course. Uh, Stormy could have Thunderbolt, it's gonna have Thunderbolt for using it. I don't... Uh, I don't think it's gonna do that or play a thing differently. Now, it's not a one-hit KO, luckily for me, but if I'm not in that range, then it's going to be... It's gonna be risky. It's gonna be risky. Um, but um, if I actually have damaged it before, then I can actually set up uh, agility against it if I'm actually healthy enough. Um, I do believe Thunderbolt does it best around 90 or 92, which means that we can actually even take rocks and come in on it and uh, go for agility and of course set up that thing. Though it should be noted that um, even if I do that play, that um, if I'm not getting B sharp out of the way, it, it could sucker punish me to death and that's always gonna suck. Um, Scrafty can also rest Silly Berry, uh, and of course Iron Head to take out. He can actually be in a setting mood against me, which means he will win the matchup against Tenchi. So that's something that would go into uh, keep in mind. Um, when it comes to Drapion, Drapion really needs to knock off a potential Scarf. While Aquatail is a nice move, it won't kill him. Digger Speed has a lot of natural HP, which means that I can only kill it if it's around the 80% area. If I'm not there, then. Um, I should go for knockoff basically to try to shut it down instead. Uh, and Digger's Blue, like I said, will have Ice Punch. And um, basically, Mega the Energy has worked as a safety set here, scouting out to protect. Uh, well, with protect, I will scout out the Scarfers. Um, and that's really the only thing I can do. Against Talent Flame, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. Um, if it's a bandit set, then I can actually opt to go for a protect to find out that it has Steel Wing. Uh, so that's is something we're gonna try to work around with. The mons I do believe is gonna bring this time around. If I were him, I would definitely brought Bishop. I would brought Stormy. I would bring Nido Queen. I would not bring Gudra this battle. Um, I would bring Scrafty. I would bring Talonflame, which means I only got one more left. And I think <sighs> I think Digger Speed is gonna be just that. Um, so that's a very aggressive set. I don't see Miss Magius, Gore Guys, Mega Odino. Or good being a part of this game. So, while I've said that, I hope I don't see them. If I see them, it's actually kind of good, um, because if, <laughs> if I'm a bit lucky, like I'm, I have to be honest and say that at least. If it has Gore guys, then you know I can do a lot of things to it. I'm not worried about the Willow spams um, or Willow spam. Or Gore guys and Miss Majors are the only ones gonna go for. Um, the Wisp, of course, but uh, I don't see that as um, dangerous, I don't see that as a thing, even if they are, um, I can still bring in my Dianja against them without really any real worries, outside of Gore Guy's Seed Bomb, which actually can't kill me. Um, but yeah, that you know, that's a thing. <laughs> but obviously, if he brings Gore Guys, then I can basically go for the setup with my Empoleon. Gore Guys is Demon, I assume that I can actually win this game against so if he brings that, then he's in trouble. Uh, but yeah, that's my team preview. And uh, of course, it's going up on Thursday, which means that the match is going up tomorrow. And of course, as always, um, make sure to of course check out Enzo. He's a very, very nice Pucktuber. And uh, 
It's a lot of fun watching him, it's really good. And of course, make sure to check out his sweep with Gudra. That is awesome. Alright, so anyway guys, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you rooted for me in this match. It's definitely going to be a tough one. But I think I am prepared enough to actually pull this off. So anyway guys, I want to thank you for watching as always. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then guys, take care.